Yeah, well, it does help to unmute the microphone. I've discovered uh, that sometimes that helps people to hear what you're saying. And can you hear me now? <laughs> Anyhow, tribe. What's important to remember, according to DSP, is that TE and FE are both tribe above self. Except there's a big problem with that. That complete bullshit. Neither FE nor TE are tribe above self. That's not... They might display like that sometimes. Depends, you know? FE is a way of interfacing with a dynamic social system that often will manifest as, like... Let me let me butter your biscuits so that you like me more. I'm buttering Cerealius' biscuits right now. Cerealius, you feel the butter knife smearing butter all over your buttocks? He feels it. Don't worry, it's whipped butter. And it's room temperature. It spreads easy. I can get any chunks, okay? Anyway, uh... Yeah, and he talks about it being a savior or, or demon, right? Like, well, if FE or TE is one of your saviors, then you get butter on your biscuit or something. I don't know. Well, if, if FE or TE is one of your saviors, then you put tri a tribe above self. But that's absolutely not true because the cognitive function is not that thing that he's talking about. It's like, I utilize an attentional manner to interface with a dynamic system, either one that's of the physical world or of the social world. And exactly how that plays out, well, that depends, you know, on a lot of shit. It's hard to say whether an FE person is really, an FE savior person is really tribe above self, although it is easy to say that they're likely to engage others instead of themselves when it comes to problem solving. TE persons likely to engage themselves when it comes to problem solving. That is to say, they're going to attend directly to the problem itself and solve it themselves. So, for example, I'm TE in my approach to things ahead of FE, which is why Socionics says TE is demonstrative. Uh, in other words, when I go, when I face a problem, my first thought is, how can I solve this myself? Then my second thought might be, all right, who can I talk to about this? And, uh, in fact, I had this problem, this situation with my phone the other day. I couldn't get a video off of it. And I don't know why. It just wouldn't show up in, in this normal folder from in the phone. And um, <clears throat> I thought about a couple different ways to solve the problem, potentially, and planned to implement one of them. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to ask Delilah because... She's got, she'll, she'll probably be able to get it on her computer and get it to me, you know? And so, um, that's an example of me first using TE, running it, it not being, it's seeming like a hassle to TESE because it's demonstrative maybe, but you don't, it's work. You can call it your work function, you know? Like TE for me, it's, it's always work and never fun. Um, so, but Delilah, Asking Delilah was a lot was a good idea, and I ended up asking her to help me, and she ended up getting it off the off of my phone onto her computer, and then getting it to me as a Google Drive link. So that was that's an example of how TE and FE both get accessed by me. Right? TE is my first approach to things. It's unconscious. I reflexively just try to solve the problem myself to some extent. I'm not really sure what TE is. I got kind of this sort of work around TE when I try to be conscious about it, but it's it's solving shit yourself. So how is that tribe above self? It's not. I mean, and then, well, DSP would probably try to position it as well. But the purpose of solving is to help the tribe. No, it's not. The purpose of solving is to solve the problem, whatever it is. It's specifically not tribe oriented. If I'm using TE, I'm solving a problem that's particular to me, maybe and my family, maybe and my little community or whatever, or maybe not. You know, sometimes I'm solving a problem that's very specific to me that has nothing to do with the community. 
You would say it's seeking tribe reasons such as Google, Amazon reviews. Okay, well, see, this is a, a this is a a strange notion that that somehow T E and F E are 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 validation things. It's true that we use F E in ways to validate people and make them feel good and stuff like that. And we use it potentially, depending on where it is in our stack, to validate ourselves. But that doesn't mean that it's actually a validation function. And so it's like when you're saying, if I, if I look on Google on how to fix something, am I using FE or TE? Well, probably I'm using TE, really, not FE. If I talk to somebody I know, I'm probably using FE. And the reason is because how to fix something or how to do something, a lot of times the how-to involves doing a little research first and figuring out the proper way to do shit or whatever. You know, TE, the, the best motto for TE of all is the right tool for the right job. And so you've got to do some assessment of the particular situation, right, to do TE correctly. But, um, but Kimberly might also Google something, but she's probably going to Google something that's not necessarily conducive to what she's actually trying to accomplish because she doesn't have the how-to very very well down. She'd much rather talk to somebody else. So, for example, with the for freezer example, she Googled what temperature is the freezer supposed to be set at, you know, which isn't really a way to solve the problem that the freezer is too warm and you need to turn it down a couple degrees. And it shows you what happens when a polar TE person attempts to do the TE thing, which is Google the shit. But it, it's just, it's like setting a boat on, on, on top of a, of a pile of rocks and expecting it to take you someplace. You know, it's like, yes, boats do take us places, but not if we put them on rocks. Then they don't float, they just sit there. But there is no most tribe function out there. The thing to remember is that every human being is fundamentally attending for their own purposes. Now, their own purposes may or may not interface with the purposes of others. They may or may not prioritize their social relations or personal relations more highly or less highly than other people. But that's not a tribe self thing. Everybody is attending. All attentional manners are of and about the self. They are an expression of the self. If I'm using extroverted feeling to make you feel good, it's not because I want the tribe to feel good. It's because I want to gain whatever it is that I want to gain from that, or I want to be a good person or whatever. It's my expression of self, trying to make my expression of self more consistent with my understanding of what myself ought to be and my expectations of the world and yada, yada, yada. So it, it's a meaningless distinction to say tribe versus self because it, mis it just says it's a meaningless distinction to say, um, you know, functions that are out in the world versus functions that are inside of you. All functions are inside of you. There's no such thing as a function that's not an expression of a single individual. So the thing to remember then is we evaluate what they are by how they attend, not by what displays might correlate with them. And that's what DSP is trying to do. He's trying to say, well, look, FE people tend to see, be seen as more helpful. Therefore, they're putting tribe above self. And therefore, that's the distinction that matters. And therefore, if somebody's tribe above self, they're F, E, or T, E. What? No. What? How do you even determine that? What's the criterion for tribe above self? How much How much do I have to prioritize tribe above self before I become T, E, or F, E? Am I really that helpful or not? Well, because the problem with that whole idea is people don't possess attributes like that. They express processes as a manner of being. Okay, then the question itself is pointless. Yeah, the question about tribe and, and self is pointless for sure. It's only gonna lead one astray because the function is not the display. The function is the process. And so we can look to the process and see, okay, well, this is uh, a process that is what, this is consistent with that, what FE does. What does FE do? FE attends to the motivations and um, likely it makes it makes causal predictions about how other people are going to respond to shit, basically. 
So you go, um, what's going on over there? Let me see. Hold on. The chickens are getting ahead of us. What's happening over here? What's going on? What's going on? Well, Marty is not an immediate sight, but I'm sure she'll turn up. Okay. Uh, so I am poor upset. Google stuff, even when two meters away from me, there's a person who has vast knowledge. Yeah. Well, who has to the knowledge? <laughs> OIE. Damn, Eric, we are mostly thinking the same things at the same time. Subjective logic, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right. Tribe, animal, feminine, and masculine terminology is a cheap attempt to pretend OPS is some kind of evolutionary psychology. Well, I hadn't thought about it in those terms, in terms in the, as how it plays like that. It does sort of lend a, uh, a sheen of scienciness that's related to biology that's totally undeserved, but it's a good point. <sighs> what function intrigues you most? Well, I mean, NI intrigues me most because, primarily because I'm an NE DOM. So I think everyone's most intrigued by their fifth function. And they find it um, alluring. Because, and, and here's a good reason to understand why, if you look at, uh, like, let's look at an INFJ, for example. I started working on this document. Oh, Shmanda, are you going to ask me that too? Uh, everybody asked me that question. No, I've not seen it. Um, the reason is, like, if you think about ignoring functions. So I'm going to actually read this thing that I started working on last night in order to explain this example. And it says a lot about TEFE and... A bunch of other shit here, really, if you think about it. So the point is, this is going to demonstrate why your implies you're ignoring function. Anytime you have your dominant function, you've got your 1, 5, 4, and 8 defined, right? And to understand what the ignoring function means is to understand what it means to have a dominant function. So here's an example. One Friday evening, Jody and her housemate Greg are sitting at home playing Overwatch in separate rooms. Jody gets a text from Bert, the address to a party. Jody rolls her chair back and leans her head out of her door, shouting, Hey, Greg, let's go to this party. Greg is full of questions. Whose party? How far? Etc. Jody's getting impatient with Greg. Why so many questions, Greg? Let's quit the game, put on our coats, and go get our drink on. If it's a cool party, great. If it's sucks, not fatally, maybe we can make it cool. Failing that, will bail. What's the big deal? You can at least tell me who's going to be there, objects Greg. I mean, you don't even know anything about this event, except that Bert told you it could be a cock for all we know. Are you like Jody? Like Greg? Somewhere in between? I said, I'm like and you are not an INFJ. If you answered Greg, you might be. Jody is an action type, and she's talking to Greg, a knowing type, assuming the primacy of her own frame. The thing about that is you can see how a knowing type has to ignore the action function in order to want to know ahead of time what's going to happen. And the action type, like me, has to ignore the knowing function in order to just go do shit and not worry about what it's going to be like, right? So um, that's, that's why it's ridiculous to understand things as non-functions. If you say tribe above animal, how, note the difference here, right? I'm explaining that to, to need to know ahead of time means a situation like this. Here's an example. 
And I'm not saying that, but do you see how that's much more specific and, and definitionally reasonably consistent? Like that you need a bunch of help means you're ignoring the kind of attention that says, jump first, ask questions later, figure it out on the fly, we'll piece it together, whatever. You cannot be both concurrently, and it's definitionally or sort of implicitly so to the nature of the attentional manner that it precludes the other. That's why it is that a knower is necessarily ignoring an action type, an action function, and an action type is necessarily ignoring a knowing function. Any DOMs ignore NI. NI DOMs ignore NE. SI DOMs ignore SE. SE DOMs ignore SO. The knowing and the action together like that, and that's why it's like that. Thank you, Joseph Grissom. I appreciate it. You're a, a wonderful individual. He says he has to give me something for my old INFP video, which helped me with self-acceptance and understanding. It was the video with which I was introduced to your channel. Well, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Um, was it INFP Nurture's Fragile Ward? One of my more tidally titles. <laughs> That's one of my most tidally titles ever. Uh, that that video has legs. It's continued to get views and, and do well. You know, the videos when I'm earnest and kind and and being being like you know moral and stuff uh, in general as a as a guiding principle behind it. Do better, have better legs. It just shows you that people, you know, it, I I can. I can slap people around argumentationally or whatever all I want, or I can be, I can be sort of cutting and crass, or I could be humorous or, and whatever else. But ultimately, you know, people appreciate authenticity and the actual, you know, people want, want to know, want to know the caring understanding of things, not, not just the, Easy dismissed, easily easily dismissed understanding of things. All right, all right. Guess what I just got? I got a text saying your drugs are ready. Yeah, yes, I got a text from the pharmacy. Eric, your drugs are ready. It's my speed dealer. My speed dealer texted me to tell me I can go pick it up. I can go pick up, you know. I was waiting for my man. Sleepy Week is O-Burr with a capital O and a capital Burr. Yeah, I know. I'm looking forward to going there. I didn't expect it was going to come in today. I actually thought they were going to wait till tomorrow because they're so, they're so freaking picky about that shit. It's like if you call it in, you can only get it 48 hours early. Not any more than that. So it's like if you if you try to get it three days before your the full month has passed, the full thirty days, then they'll say you have to wait a day. You know. So um, I was, I could I was trying to do the math. Oh, Kim and now Kimberly's calling me too. I've got a little phone explosion. Hello, Kimberly. Uh, how am I? I'm fine. How are you? I am in the garage. Where are you? Oh, you just got home. Okay. I was worried you were gone so long. I thought maybe you'd gotten killed by people in Baldwin Park. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm live streaming right now, so uh, I'll talk to you shortly. Goodbye. Okay, so Kimberly went and she got us another massive project to do, which I'm so excited to undertake. We've got some chain link fences that I'm going to have to put up. Um, that's a very INFP avatar. Shmanda, I think you're right. I like your name, Shmanda, by the way. Shmanda is a good name. I bet your name's not really Shmanda, though. I bet it's Amanda. Shma Shamanda. Shamanda. 
I bet there's no should in front of your name is my point. Um, they're not going to make me wait another day, That's, or else they wouldn't have sent me the text. I've, I've learned the ways of them. That means that because last month was 31 days, I was correct about the math, and I could get it today. Which is pretty cool, so I just got to go up there and do that at some point. It's the only thing you pretty much completely follow through and through on and know exactly <laughs> how to manipulate. Everything else... My SI is great when it comes to my my speed prescriptions. Right. Yeah. They call, he says, when, where, how, why, and splits. Shamanda, listen, I'm an intuitive, okay? I can pierce, with my piercing intuition, I can see right through your name alias. You thought you were going to roll in here and fool us all into thinking your name was actually Shamanda. But... I saw through it, and I'm. For a was, second, give me a lighter. Thank you. Quit wedding for a second. Flirting. Flirting, flirting with Shmanda. Oh, is that what I was doing? <laughs> Sorry, Shmanda. Sorry, I flirted with you. That was inappropriate of me. Uh, Planet Ketchup says, "Hi, Kimberly." Uh -huh. And um, I second her notion. It's not a motion, it's a notion. I second that emotion was a good idea for a song where Kruber came up with that. That was pretty Are clever. Any of my other friends there? Well, let's see. Oh, TJ Music's there. TJ Music's there. Hambone is here. And you know what he's doing? He's boning the ham, he's hamming the bone. He is bone, ham in the bone. He's a bo bo bone, a bone in the ham. He's ham bone. Shamanda, what do you think about Paul Joseph Watson? I have no idea who that is. Oh, you mean PJ Dub? I have no idea who that is. Is he... Does he have three first names? Yes, he does. He has three first names. That's what I think about him. Paul Joseph Watson. Maybe her name is Shman, Shaman. Maybe she's a Shaman district attorney. That's a good point, Planet Ketchup. She could be a district attorney for the Shamans. I found that INFJs have this funny addiction with winning arguments. <sighs> I don't know, they to argue with me. INFJs and I get along well, and... We don't tend to argue at all. I think it's because, but well, probably because of the context somewhat too. If I were rolling in, rolled up in upon an INFJ in real life, didn't know anything about functions, and yeah, yeah, then maybe I would battle. He's a pol conservative political commentator, huh? I, you know, I was looking for her a second ago, too. I heard her flapping her wings out there, and I don't know. What type are you, Shamanda? Shamanda is an NTJ. Boom. Nailed it again, Eric. Nailed it again. I think my civics teach ENT, and he would always pick on me in class because my name is Brenna Renee Lee. And he said people with three first serial killers. <laughs> well, Brenna Renee Lee has got a lot of E's in it. So does Kimberly Lee. That's true. But Brenna, Brenna Renee Lee has got one, two, three, four, five, six E's, two, three N's, six E's. Three N's, two R's, a B and an A. That's an anagram party waiting to happen. No one watched the Peterson and Zizek debate. I'm not, it sounds like work to me watching that. You know, it's one thing about being a debate coach is I, you know, when I watch a debate, I, I know a couple of things. Like, for example, 
I know I'm going to be pissed because it's not structured well and it's not really, they're not really being responsive enough and people aren't being fucking held to account, you know? And I know that's going to annoy me. And number two, I know that if I am going to really engage the debate, that means I'm going to have to flow it and I'm going to have to be able to articulate RFDs and shit, you know? It's like I'm used to actually judging debate. Yeah, I still do type police videos. I just haven't done one in a while. But that should change today, probably. Uh, today or tomorrow. I'm going to get my speed today. So, you know, with amphetamines in my heart, a pure and glorious virginity emerges. that lets me ride unicorns. And without it, I become sullied and dirty like a harlot. Andrew Rice. Okay, what type does he say he is? That's true. Really thought I would be more hard to read than that. Disappointing. Well, you are. I'm not saying you're not hard to read. Most people would have been fooled immediately. But remember, like Raul Diego, I am intuitive. Okay? I intuit things. Just like pew, 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 pew. I mean, Like everything makes sense now. Wow. Eric. Wow. Okay, well, the manifesto. The thing is, if you want to get into a debate about Marxism, the problem that's going to happen every time you start to debate that is the people have different understandings of what wealth means, what it means to have an economic system. Um, you know, it's like people begin those conversations without doing the pre-work that needs to be done. What is your definition of wealth? Where does it come from? What does it mean? You don't have that down. You can't have that discussion. I bet you neither Jordan Peterson nor Zizek has a definition. Shocking and remarkably. You know, there you go, Florian. Problem was, none of them knew what Marxism even was exactly. This is what I'm saying. How can you have that conversation even if you don't know what wealth is? First and foremost, Planet Ketchup's preteen brother has had his intuition preference confirmed. That must have been quite a relief to him. He no doubt doubted heavily the veracity of his intuition preference prior to your confirmation of it. And uh, is no doubt doing an Irish gig of joy. Can he do the typing without revealing his face? Who? Me? Can I type people without revealing my face? Yes. I can type people from behind a curtain. It's true. I need to be able to see their face, but they don't need to be able to see mine. Oh. Oh, it's not. I just I don't think it's going to be on. Well, I don't know. Maybe it'll be on. I put up lots of videos with kids in them. I put up videos of my students all the time. I don't even ask anybody's permission. I just do it. And if they don't like it, I'll take it down. You know, Easier to seek forgiveness than permission. Oh, yeah, I got all kinds of kids up on my channel. But it's like we're all doing wholesome shit. You know, we're debating and stuff. You know, it's not like I'm doing anything weird. So... I pull a bong rip now. Who would like me to transubstantiate this bong rip into their brain? I'm going to ask today. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I forgot. There's a clear winner here of the transubstantiated bong rip, and that's Joseph Grissom. Joseph Grissom, this transubstantiated bong rip is for you, and I want to tell you, you're in luck, because today we're smoking Gorilla OG. And it's the moral of the story is usually... Trust the bud tender lady. They may be dumb about a lot of stuff, and a lot of them are, are very dumb. Like, you know, when you tell them, yeah, I, I want to get a quarter for 60, and they go, ooh, we only got eights for 30. <laughs> you go, okay, sweetie. Love the boobs. Love them. They're great. And I like how on display you have them. But basic math is not one of your strong suits. Anyway, but they do know their weed. And she recommended this Gorilla OG. And boy, was she right. It's 
packs quite the punch. So if you're driving Joseph Grissom, please pull over until the immediate effects of the bomb are passed. Hereby do I transubstantiate. Let me get the rest of that for you, Joseph. I, it was a little clogged at the beginning. I apologize for that. I guess I packed you a bigger bummer than I thought, Joseph. I hope you weren't uh, planning on working later today. Unless you're a regular head like me, in which case it's fine. Do you want Becky out this last one? Okay. Thank you. This, this is going for you. Joseph says he's had enough. This is an indica. It, it, it's a this is an indica hybrid, really, because well, it's, it's Gorilla OG. Gorilla brings a little bit of the sativa back into the OG strain. The OG strain in general is a uh, is a straight up indica strain, but <clears throat> Gorilla Glue is a hybrid, and Gorilla OG is putting it puts the it puts more OG back into the strain, you know? Peppers that Howdy Do is cutting at work. Hello. It's really good to have you cut here today before me. I have two sets of parents while both my siblings and me are intuitive, says Cerelius. Cerelius. Well, uh, I have two sets of parents and I'm intuitive as well. I have Gorilla Glue Plant Catch. If you've had that. Um, how does War Wing fuck? Well, first be an individual, then think about it. If you wait, fuck your life. If Becky, why fuck your life? Don't say that. That makes me sad. I cross. OG with Gorilla Glue with an actual ch chimpanzee. That would be interesting. I have an ISFJ sister and probably ENTP brother. Your brother is little, huh? That's, your parents had your, the kids. Uh, my parents are both sensors. Got an INTP sister, an ESTP brother, and an ISTJ sister. And I and F just, yeah, they got two sensors, two intuitives. That's the perfect nuclear family, Senjin, actually. You've got, uh, you've got, well, not quite. What you have there is beta quadraduals as brother and brother. And then ideally, the ISTJ sister would have been ESFJ. And then you would have had a perfect, you know, uh, brother, brother. Uh, alpha beta family ongoing battle. It would have been great. Brinley at just me. What's your MPTI? Ah, just me. I don't have one. I'm just me. That's what his answer is. Julie 32, Jess 28, me 26, Dylan 11. 
15 years between children. Bum, bum, bum. That's a long time between the last children and the next last children. Uh, Dylan. Dylan. Must be, I mean, your parents must have been like, let's say they were 20 when they had Julie. Well, that's 21 years later. So they must have been in their 40s at least, right? What are your thoughts on epigenetics and them playing a role in the chances of a child being a certain type? Uh, I I think it's very likely. I, I mean, I don't really have any conclusion to determine regarding, like, there's no conclusiveness about it, but I do think that the mother's hormones seem like a likely culprit for determining type in the womb. And if that counts as epigenetics, I'm not sure if that does. But if it does, then I, I think it's true. And reminds me of a joke. So, you know, here's the joke. It goes like this. I was, I went out to a bar with my girlfriend for her 25th birthday and just kind of a little bit older. People were like, Hey, you're robbing the cradle. And I'm like, she's 25. Can you let us celebrate our 12th anniversary in peace? <laughs> but it's oh, birthday though. is the first part. Anyway, uh, that's a little pedophilia joke. Regardless, um, yeah, you can do peace like that. It's funny, right? Cause it's, it's uh, something I don't know. Do you strive to identify, discover your identity, like who am I? Type questions a lot. Do you just me? Do you say who am I? Okay, let me go back and see if I've missed some comments or questions or something of the sort. Um, MFTETI, sleep, dance, drink. Let's make a bunch of verbs. I think my civic teacher, I read that. So many E's. You know, I had a student one time, though, whose name was. Madison Sky Stefaniak Di Dominic Antonio. Madison Sky Stefaniak Di Dominic Antonio. That's a long name, right? That's a lot of syllables. A lot of Di Dominic Antonio is a long last name. Di Dominic Antonio. That's eight syllables all by itself. So why would they want to name her Madison Sky Stefaniak Di Dominic Antonio? I call her Dito, I think. Maddie D or Dito. Because there's another Maddie. Maddie Impert. I said I mean I said her whole name a lot too. Every time like she'd be like look, chatting with her neighbor in class or to say Madison Sky Stefanic Dominicantonio. Dominicantonio. <laughs> You know, I have I have lots of like memories like that of of nicknames for kids and and you know kids kids names stick in my head uh, strange names you know I had a student named Richard Dong one time Dick Dong um, we can only hope his middle name was Penis let me see if I can decipher this I kid Kit Kaitim Bonona, very cherry Ruchi pit has fallen into the well. <laughs> yes, well, you know, I have a song about a person who's named their child Eight Ball Atastrophe Jackson. 
is not a real person, but um, I think that's a good name. If you want to be an action hero, name your you want your child to be an action hero. Nickname name him Eight Ball Atastrophe Jackson. Do you think the intuitives can become better, more aware of their vulnerable function because they're better at metacognating about it? That's a dangerous question, Florian Bischoff. Um, I mean, it's very tempting to say yes. Is it odd for an INTP to really enjoy lifting weights? Um, I guess it would depend why the INTP is lifting them. If they really enjoy lifting them because, you know, they're currently crushing their feet. So it feels really good to lift the weights off of their feet. Then I would say uh, that would be consistent with an INTP dropping weights on their foot. It would be in general, I think in general, INTPs want to have a little bit of SE shit occasionally, but they don't stick with it for very long. A children's book that's been imprinted in my mind forever. It was a fable to teach Chinese families not to give their firstborns excessively long names. Well, Planet Ketchup, I want to point out that there's also a Chinese tradition of naming their first burns, as you indicate there. The first time a child gets burned in China, they give it a really long name. That was the time you brushed up against the stove and your sleeve slightly caught a fire burn. You know. Just me, my advice to you is learn to live comfortably without having a secure sense of identity 100% of the time. Sometimes you will be live, I know, who I am, but then it fades and you start to question things you know to be true about yourself. The kid dies in the well, if I remember right. <laughs> Iki tiki tembo no so rimbo berry cherry rupee pit berry penbo. Hmm. Hi, Catherine Fisher. How are you today? She's Catherine. She's Fisher. She's Catherine Fisher with a Y. Don't mistake her for the Catherine with an E or an A. What is normally Catherine spelled with an A? An I? I don't even know. All right. Thanks. Back to lifting a full, fallen boulder off of my feet. Good. Good idea. Thank you, Brenna. You're an INFP, right? Also 415? I ain't no INFP. I'm really, goddammit. Brenna Renee e -E 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 Lee. It's my name. Good lol. How are you? I am so, so good. I am feeling absolutely wonderful today. I am thinking about sunshine. I'm thinking about rainbows. I'm loving my chickens. Kimberly, do you know that I took the chickens across the street for an outing earlier when you were gone? I took them over across the street where there's a little stretch of those trees and shit. And there's lots of good digging leaves and they scratch, scratch, scratch. And they really enjoyed themselves. We had a nice outing over there. Make sure there's no dog I was standing with them the whole time. What's the chick's name? Officer's Red. Well, that's one of our chickens is Officer Red. The other one is Maudie. Officer Red is not in here at the moment, but Maudie is. Here's Maud. Hello, Maudie, my old friend. You're standing on the couch again. You're not supposed to get on top the couch. You're supposed to stay on the ground down south. Be a normal chicken so that we can live normally. Live in peace. Be the chicken of silence. <laughs> <laughs> That was Chicken of Silence by Eric and Kim. <laughs> Be the chicken of silence. 
chicken. Yeah, we do need more Thai police. Well, I'm going to go to the... I'm going to... She's so loving. <laughs> One thing I like about Kimberly is how tenderly and gently she te treats my feelings. Yeah, Officer Red is the best. She does like to throw him in the slammer no matter what. That's the one thing I got to kind of hold her back. She needs a partner because otherwise she just comes back in the squad cars jammed full of, of perps. She just arrests everybody she sees. So that's, yeah, this is her, her, her official uniform bib. <laughs> chicken, chicken officers get bibs in the type police. Uh, Sheila made this for Officer Red. So when she's on duty, she really needs to be wearing this, but she doesn't really like wearing it, to be honest. I got to tell you, she's a rebel. She rejects type police uniform policy, which is kind of frustrating. Everybody else gets demoted, but the brass just keeps, just, they just keep promoting her. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's see. Oh, look. It's Jolly Jolly. Shabadoo. Boy, you got a little bit of pushback on the INFJ, or I got a little bit of pushback on the INFJ typing of you. But it seems so obvious to me. I don't understand why anybody would give me pushback about it, because the thing is, people don't like it when I, like, they want to see, ideally, here, do five typings of sensors before you do and it's then have an intuitive that's more like it because that's more fair because that percentage is actually there in the world but the reality is people interested in this channel we have an unusually high percentage of infjs around because infjs and ENTPs share a common metaphysicality and infjs like the ignoring function ne just like i like the ignoring function ni and so this is naturally going to appeal to them so there are going to be more INFJs around here than there are at the supermarket. You know, if you go to the supermarket and you go, are INFJs super rare? Yeah, you're probably not going to find any in the supermarket at that moment unless you are one yourself. Um, but if you come around here and you're dealing with somebody who wants to be typed and or, you know, is uncertain about that and is hanging around here in the chat room, so there's a decent chance they're an intuitive. I don't think Kimberly would be hanging out in here if it weren't for the fact that she's an integral part of it. You know, it's like, I don't think she'd find this channel and become interested in it just as a viewer for very long. Mm -hmm. It's too, too jargony, too boring. boring, yada, yada. Have I typed Mikey from Glam and Gore yet? She's cute and she has one video where she mentions what she thinks her type is. I've never even heard of this person before, but that's a good suggestion. Cute chicks always uh, play well in the views, you know. People like to look at them. My chick is thick. Becky, you are correct. With two C's and a K. Uh, Kimberly lives there. She can't escape. <laughs> that's true. She's kind of She's kind of trapped here. Uh, she periodically trapped goes, "Why did I invite this vampire into my ho my home?" Trapped in host Eric I done. I've done nine 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 green eyes. Who's an ISTP probably, but definitely not an INTP. Bogdan Yakubets. I've seen maybe a couple of things links to his videos before, but I don't think I've ever done him before. So let's check him out. Uh. If cute chicks play well, type Elon Musk already. Elon Musk isn't a cute chick. The channel wouldn't be the same without Kimberly. Well, it wouldn't. That's true. It was different before, for sure. And I think it's much better now. I do believe we complement each other well in terms of the channel extremely well. And it's something that uh, I, from the get-go, valued a great deal about Kimberly is the way that she participates and contributes and and the ways in which she doesn't as well, you know. So it's like it's it's a perfect fit. I didn't know what it would be like to have a perfect relationship partner 
for the channel, what that would look like until I it happened with Kimberly, and I was like, okay, this is what I this is exactly what I want. So that's great. Um, she is very emotionally intelligent. She's super emotionally intelligent about other people's emotions, and you know. As an FE dom, as, he, as an FE user in the conscious tag, she's her FI is unconscious, just like anybody else who has FE in the conscious tag. It's not exactly the funny thing is with demonstrative function, it's semi-conscious, sort of. You know, she's a compliment to the channel. Yes, her her angle is complementary to mine, such that it makes 180 degrees, which is why we just do nothing but go around in a circle here. No, that would be 360 degrees, Eric. Get your degrees and shapes correlates right. God. So I was telling Kimberly last night, uh, everybody likes it when she busts my chops. The funny thing is, uh, <laughs> I, I like it when she busts my chops on the channel, usually. But the thing is, I don't like it so much when she busts my chops not on camera. Because well, then there's... You know what? I'll start busting your chops on camera about everything. Uh, camera really... Uh, the thing is, uh, how does the eight slot FE behave? Okay. So the answer to that is it is instrumental to the TE. If you got eight slot FE, you got dominant TE. And we should think about the eight slot function as our unconscious tool function. It's the, what Sociana's called our role function. It's the thing that that actually is kind of the, the hidden engine of our personality behind everything else. But it's always serving the dominant, and never the other way around. So my SE is always serving my any and not the other way around. And uh, similarly, if you're a TE dom, your FE is always serving your TE. This is why TE doms are thought of as assholes, because they have just enough FE. Their they're, FE is instrumental. It's like, well, you're just being nice to me because you want to want something. Like Kimberly's mom, for example. Um, it would be easy to critique her and say, God, you're you're like grasping in some fashion because you know you want do you want to get in on this this real estate deal because you're a real estate agent and so you're gonna kind of schmooze me and shit, you know. But I, I totally understand that she's an ESTJ and that it doesn't reflect anything other than her relationship with FE. That is to say, it's instrumental to her. And I don't I don't reject it because it's instrumental in that fashion. I say, okay, well that's fine. I I you don't have to smooth me. That but I don't I understand that you're an ESTJ. So that means you're going to be a interface type. An interface type has interface in the one and eight and they're pretty good at quote unquote or they use a lot of attention in both so i do a lot of se when i couldn't get a hold of kimberly on the phone to see what was taking her so long i was bored so i just and i hadn't gotten my text from the pharmacy yet so what did i do i just i don't know i just started a live stream i'll title it something about day superpowers <laughs> and uh I, the reason i titled it that was because rebecca sent me this we put a link in the comment that said the link to dave superpowers is te versus fe thing and i thought my head was going to fall off from shaking so hard i was just spent the whole video going like this no 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 it's Sheila W. Oh my gosh. Sheila W., it is wonderful to see you here today. We were just talking about your absolutely delightful bib that you made for us. Officer Red's bib. We were just showing it off to them. Joey Joe. What holds Kimberly's nefarious back is the social factors of environment. I mean, that's sort of true, but it's actually, it's 
no, what what prevents nefariousness? Nefariousness is just an expression of of defense. Defense, you know, and it, she's not a bad person at all. Tribe, as in one in the flock of sheep. Well, I would say tribe is not a. My point is the tribe is not a meaningful distinction. Your relationship with tribe, everybody has their own interests foremost, you know, driving them. And sometimes those interests are best met by um, being very well liked. That doesn't necessarily mean you're prioritizing the tribe. Few people would say I'm tribe focused, uh, but you can see the FE driving everything that I do anyway, you know. Just me says, Brenna, I have pink on my cheeks. I've got my eyes closed and I've got a smiley face. And I've got two hands like this. That's what he says. Um, or she, whatever just me is. Hey, Joey, says Sheila W. That's code for want to come do lines of blow? Sheila and Joey Joe are always going to each other's houses, scissoring and doing blow, as we know from previous live streams. Brenna Lee says, Ah, Sheila and Brenna Lee! Planet Catcher says, F.E. Game Strong, Eric. Good game. Thanks. I'm working it. I'm working to be suave. I started at uh, critically awkward. Fatally awkward, you might say. Um, and I'm working my way up to suave. Right now, I'm at uh, Wallflower, which is somewhere between fatally awkward and suave. It's a lot of progress I've made so far, all the way up to Wallflower. Hi, Brenna. It's good to see you back. We missed you, don't you know? I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna have you say, "Don't you know, Sheila?" So that uh, we can really incorporate your locale your place of life where you live um in oh uh oh we're dropping again we're drippity droppity drooping that's no good let's try this i'm gonna put a piece of wood here that should solve the problem when in doubt, when in doubt use a piece of wood I just wish DSP would have just claimed himself a goal-oriented guru and separated from typology community. Well, he's got himself in a bit of a bind now. He does. He's got himself in a bit of a bind. And that bind relates to the fact that he has got a lot of time, energy, and conviction invested in this clusterfuck of wrongness he calls a system. And that, in a nutshell, is DSP's problem. Ladies talking about scissoring. What the fuck's going on? Well, I, I pulled back the veil, Joel Nathan Henry. I pulled back the veil. Women have been hiding it from men for millennia now. What do they do? Instead of shaking hands when they greet, if there aren't any men around, they quickly take their pants off and scissor. Put the pants back on. And then the men are none the wiser. This is why they're so slow leaving the house. Because they have to quickly scissor before they go. Why they're so slow about everything, you know? Because they're always squeezing in secret scissor sessions. You know, the SS, the German SS, the Nazi SS, they took their name from scissor, scissor chess sessions um, and, and hoped to be as successfully uh, clandestine in their operations as women are in their scissorings. So, the secret scissor sesh. Yeah. Triple S? If you ever hear a girl uh, say to, to another girl, she goes, S -S -S. or Triple S. You know what they're talking about now. You don't buy the scissoring conspiracy? Um, go ahead and stick your head in the sand. Go ahead and bury your head deep in that sand and you just hide away in your illusional la-la land where everything's just what they tell you. Go ahead and be a sheep. Be a conformist. 
Go ahead. But I know the truth. And the truth. Both. What would you say to an ENTJ that doesn't want to get delusional like the yes, Joseph? Uh, keep Just keep straight the two... The, there are two different things here. There's purpose and there's legitimacy. Keep those two things straight as different and don't conflate the two and you'll be fine. <laughs> you want evidence? Listen, I've got over 4,000 hours of uh, video of women scissoring that I found on the internet. <laughs> and if that's not proof... <laughs> If that's not proof, I don't know what is. Okay? I have found so much video on the internet of women scissoring that uh, it's got to be true. I mean, you want, I mean, how much do you need to see? Okay? First of all, I got to say, it's not very hygienic. It's less hygienic than shaking hands. So I think maybe, you know, instead of having all those signs of saying, wash your hands before going back to work. Now stop fucking scissoring at work. You're getting vaginal juices all over everything. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Big hig you should. You should research that. Just make sure you open an incognito window first, okay? You don't want that shit showing up in your uh, search history. Mian, have you seen Lavoda's pet caterpillars? Um, you need to speak about the brow empress with a little bit more respect than that, Jeremiah. Okay. We can all learn from Megan's brows. What type do I think Adam Carolla is? A Toyota. I have to ask you, how did you come up with this? Oh, how did this come up? Well, oh, I don't know. It's just an ongoing joke that I. I make about and like and like for example, as I an example I gave the other day in the live stream was if my daughter's hanging out in a room with her friend or something and I gotta ask her a question or knock on the door or something for some reason. And I'll say, um, if you guys aren't scissoring right now, can you come help me with this, Delilah? If you're done scissoring, <laughs> something like that, you know, just sort of an ongoing joke. Uh, are there 512 types of scissoring women to prove your point? I'm still conflicted on this. Whether there are actually subtypes of scissoring, or if it's just if it's just like you know, kind of a display thing. We know there are 16 clear, distinct types of scissoring. Besides, you know, yes, there's there's side Z's and back Z's, right? So, you know, you can either be side Z's in which you got to move both legs, or you can be bottom Z's in which case you only got to move one leg. So, um, but the thing is, what you have to factor in is the one-legged kind, some of them are right-leg dominant, some of them are left-leg dominant. And the two-legged kind, some of them prefer to come at it from the side, and some of them prefer to come at it from the back. So when you do all those permutations, that's where you get your 16 types. Now, sure, there are some women who like to scissor faster and some who like to scissor slower, and you got to match those speeds. Like, what you don't want to have in a, in a scissor greet is something like this. This person's going like this, and then this one's going chop, 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 because that will actually end up chopping the other woman in half. You got to match speeds to avoid any actual chopping. It's just, it's called scissoring, but you don't want to actually chop each other in half. So you got to be careful about this, the the timing of the thing. There's a timing belt kind of thing that you have to to fix. You get a little timing light, and it goes, and then you figure out the right speed. Well, see, okay, I, I'm i not sure I buy that one, okay? I'm not sure there are ambulextrous people. Some people say there are. So a lot of people claim to be ambulextrous, but um, I don't buy it. I, I just think it doesn't make sense. You're habitually going to favor one scissoring leg if you spend your whole life scissoring. And, you know, if you put, you know, they, they start it just like in, the, in utero. If you got sisters in, in utero, they start doing it right away. So, um, so it's a lifelong thing. It's it's genetically imprinted in them. And the only way to to save yourself from having that that disorder, basically called scissor compulsion disorder, that affects all women, 
is to have a Y chromosome. Then you're relieved of the compulsion. So that's why James Barton, Joel, Nathan Henry, you guys don't want to scissor each other. You guys don't want to scissor me, right? But Joey, Joe, Joe, Joe Shabadu right now is just sort of absentmindedly, imaginarily scissoring every time she she talks to a woman in the chat. Just it's not even she's not even aware it's happening. Her legs just go like this. Okay. So uh, that's that's the important news I wanted to share with everybody today, and I just want to make sure that that everybody knows that and takes that at home and lives with that reality for a while. I think I'm going to get off the internet now because Kimberly would like me to. I can tell she's not here right now, but she's giving me this sort of. Come hover and then walk away and then come hover and walk away thing. That means, uh, well, Santa, of course, it, it, okay, there is an exception to the Y chromosome rule. If you are a holiday saint or whatever you are, then you love to scissor and everyone loves to scissor you. So it's true for Easter Bunny, even though the Easter Bunny is male. Uh, it's true for Santa. It's true for um, Uncle Sam, you know, for Fourth of July. Uncle Sam's a great scissor. If you've never scissored Uncle Sam, you're missing out. I tell you, he's, he's got a meaty package, too, so it's just like flopping up against you the whole time. It's juicy. Uh, okay, so anyway, thanks for being here, everybody, and helping me kill this hour or so as I was waiting for my drug connect to the pharmacy to send me a text. Thanks, thanks for being here, and thank you very much, Jane. Um, I'm so bad with names. Thank you very much, uh, Joseph Grissom. I remember before I even saw it. Joseph Grissom for the super chat. I appreciate it. Very kind of you. And I hope you're enjoying your life as an INFP. My supervisor. <laughs> 